ambitious, tenacious, the intranet entrepreneur and tech innovator with a gift for computer program. The man who became the planet's youngest billionaire at 23 and who created one of the world's most popular social network, Facebook. Along with Amazon, Google, Apple, and Microsoft, Facebook is one of the big five companies in the U.S. tech industry. So what did it take to build such a revolutionary business? Well, it took someone like Mark Zuckerberg, the young genius who connected people in ways never thought possible. In 2021, his net worth is estimated at $96 billion. The giant social network has had a vertiginous growth since its creation. Take a journey into how Mark Zuckerberg built the giant that has changed billions of lives and the way people interact with the world. They are masterminds, ambitious, competitive, and ruthless, not afraid of failure, dedicated to their mission of bettering the world, always reaching for excellence. They lead by example. Unlike many industries, the tech billionaires are mostly self-made. It is through their genius that they revolutionize the industry, and together, they change the world. Join us in this series as we take a look at some of the wealthiest entrepreneurs in the modern world. The tech billionaires, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, and Jeff Bezos. Together, they're worth a collective of more than 900 billion US dollars. They will be remembered in history as the most influential people of the 21st century. Mark Elliott Zuckerberg was born on May 14, 1984, in White Plains, New York, into a comfortable, well-educated family. He was the second of four children and the only son. He grew up with his three sisters in the suburbs of New York, Dobbs Ferry. His father, Edward Zuckerberg, was a dentist, and his mother, Karen, a psychiatrist. Young Mark developed an interest in computers at an early age, he began programming in middle school with the active support of his father, and he was learning fast. When Mark was about 12, he used the Atari Basic program his father had taught him to create his own messaging program he named Zucknet. His father used the program in his dentist's office so that the receptionist could inform him of a new patient without yelling across the room. The family also used Zucknet to communicate within the house. Together with his friends, Zuckerberg also enjoyed creating computer games, just for fun, as he said. To keep up with their son's enthusiasm and growing interest in computers, his parents even hired a private tutor, David Newman, while he was still in high school. Newman later told reporters that it was hard to stay ahead of the prodigy. Zuckerberg studied at the exclusive Phillips Exeter Academy in New Hampshire. There he showed talent in fencing becoming the captain of the school's team. He excelled in classes and earned a diploma in classics. Yet he remained fascinated by computers and continued to focus on his passion of developing new programs. While in high school, he created an early version of the music software Pandora, which he called Synapse. It was clear that he had an entrepreneur's mindset from an early age. Even before he founded Facebook, he was actually on Microsoft's radar. The company and several others, including AOL, approached the teenager for buying the software and hiring him before graduation. He declined the offers. After graduating from Exeter in 2002, Mark Zuckerberg enrolled at Harvard University, where he studied psychology and computer science. 
but this time he was already a programming prodigy. By his sophomore year, he developed a reputation as the go-to software developer on campus. It was at that time that he built a program called Course Match, which helped students choose their classes based on the course selections of other users and also help them form study groups. But the young freshman was a bit of a troublemaker. In 2003, he invented a website, by far the most talked about things that he created. The site was called Face Mash, and it allowed students to judge the attractiveness of other students by comparing two pictures and vote on one who was the most attractive person. The software then ranked the results. Even though Zuckerberg created it just for fun, it became wildly popular. But people didn't like that their pictures were being used without their permission. And Zuckerberg actually violated university policy by hacking into Harvard's security network. Face Mash was deemed offensive and inappropriate and was shut down a few days later by the school. Zuckerberg apologized for his actions, saying he thought of it as a fun computer experiment. He faced serious charges of violating individual privacy. Harvard nearly expelled him, but then put him on probation. This would be the first time he ever got into trouble, but his journey was just starting. The genius had seen his future and had an undeniable potential. People wanted to see what he would do next. Based on the buzz of his previous projects, three of his fellow students, Divya Narendra and twins Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss, reached out to him to work on an idea for a social networking site they called Harvard Connection. They wanted to create a dating site for the Harvard elite by using information from the student networks. Zuckerberg agreed to help them in the beginning. But while working on coding for program, he got a fantastic idea for his own social network. Soon, he decided to pursue his own adventure. It all started in 2004, when the freshman Harvard student and his friends decided that they would start a social project together. Zuckerberg's fellow students and roommates included Chris Hughes, Andrew McCollum, Eduardo Saverin, and Dustin Moskovitz. It turned out to be the perfect combination of people to found a company that would later become the most popular social network in the world. So, on February 4, 2004, out of his college dorm room and surrounded by the elite, Zuckerberg co-founded and launched a site that allowed students to connect online, the Facebook. Those who signed up could create their own profiles, share information about their lives, upload photos and communicate with other users. His goal? giving people the ability to share information in a safe environment. Well, I mean, I think our focus is just on building the best, simplest, and easiest product for people to share information in all the ways that they want, right? So we started off just incredibly simple, right? There are only a few different ways to share information. And, you know, over the last few years, we've added photos, um, videos, notes, messages, just all these different types of things. And each of these are just used massively. So photos, for example, I mean, there are more than 100 million photos uploaded you know, a month in the UK alone. Our goal is really just to enable all of that. And we think that if we provide the easiest, you know, best, simplest way for people to share all these kinds of information that they want with exactly the people that they want, then that's just a long-term, very valuable thing. Giving people complete control over their privacy actually, while creating a safe environment, it also makes it so that people can share more information. So it's a really important part of what we do. Facebook was a hit from day one. Within two weeks, half of the student body had signed up. We're not going to share people's information except for with the people that they've asked for it to be shared. And, you know, everyone gets privacy settings. It's always been one of the big differentiators for Facebook, a really different service for people is you can say, you know, I want this photo album to go to these people or I want this note to go to these people. And um, the, the privacy controls on Facebook are really unparalleled by anything else. The group of friends ran the site out of their dorm room until June 2004. Zuckerberg recalled the early days with nostalgia years later in his Harvard commencement speech. I remember that night I launched Facebook from that little dorm in Kirkland House. 
I went to Noakes with my friend KX, and I remember telling him clearly that I was excited to help connect the Harvard community, but one day someone would connect the whole world. The thing is, it never even occurred to me that that someone might be us. We were just college kids. We didn't know anything about that. But the social network has a complicated early history. Zuckerberg faced a challenge shortly after Facebook launched. His three former classmates and creators of Harvard Connection, now called Connect U, filed a lawsuit against him a few months later. They claimed that Zuckerberg stole their idea and business plan and insisted that he needed to pay for their business losses. Facebook launched in February 2004 and Connect U three months later. But it struggled and was then shut down. Zuckerberg maintained that the ideas were based on two very different types of social networks. Incriminating messages revealed that Zuckerberg may have intentionally stolen the intellectual property of Harvard Connection. He later apologized, saying he regretted his actions. The matter was eventually settled out of court. It was during a frat party in his second year of college at Harvard in 2003 that Zuckerberg met his better half, Priscilla Chan, a Chinese-American medical student from Boston. They came from two different worlds, but their hearts connected. He was this nerdy guy who's just a little bit out there, Chan told the New Yorker. Early on in their relationship, Chan set some strict ground rules because Zuckerberg was so busy with Facebook. She apparently required one date night and a minimum of 100 minutes of alone time per week, not at Facebook. They finally made the relationship official. Zuckerberg may not have gotten a degree out of Harvard, but he met the woman that he would marry. He declared years later, she is the most important person in my life so you could say it was the most important thing I built in my time here. In 2004, after his sophomore year, Zuckerberg dropped out of college to devote himself full-time on building the website. He's not the first big name in Silicon Valley to have dropped out of college and gone on to find success. Apple co-founder Steve Jobs and two of the world's richest men, Bill Gates and Tesla CEO Elon Musk, all dropped out of school to start their own company. After he dropped out of Harvard, Zuckerberg felt himself growing wings, and he and the Facebook team moved the company to the other side of the continent, to Palo Alto, California, where they opened its first office. They partied a lot, but also worked even harder. The Facebook officially became Facebook, and by the end of 2004, it already had one million users. The website was and still is free to use. Most of its earnings come from ads. At first restricted to Harvard students, it expanded over time to other colleges, international schools, and even beyond. What I wanted to do when I was getting started was simply just make a way for people to learn some things about the people around them at university and be able to communicate with people around them um, and so basically stay in touch with their friends. And it's just turned out that over the past seven years or so as the company has scaled that that wasn't just a need that was fixed to, to my college or colleges in general. Um, the desire to stay connected with your friends and family is I think a relatively universal thing across the world. By December 2005, it had 6 million users, and the growth didn't seem to slow down. We're building a technology company, right? So we focus on really technical solutions to complex problems involving helping people communicate in a lot of new ways. So, I mean, as a technology company, it would really only make sense to work with someone who shared our values and stuff like that. But I mean, if you look at how we're growing, we're really just at the beginning. In May 2005, as Facebook was already worth around $100 million, the venture capital firm XL Partners invested $12.7 million in the company, which enabled the expansion of the network even more. The Facebook epidemic started. 
Within four years, it would overtake MySpace, the most popular social network before Facebook. In the long term for, for Facebook is we're really just focused on our mission, just helping people share information. Um, we believe really deeply that if people are sharing more, then the world will be a more open place where people can understand what's going on with the people around them. And that's really what we want to get towards. In September 2006, Facebook announced that anyone who was at least 13 years old and had a valid email address could join. If you look at the ways that people are sharing today, I still think it's quite primitive compared to what is going to be possible and the power that will be in people's hands when we get to that end state. And I think that that's going to be awesome. And that's something that I think is really worth fighting for. Zuckerberg was on his way to success. He has said, someone needs to build a service like this for the world. But I just never thought that we'd be the ones to help do it. And I think a lot of what it comes down to is we just cared more. There are just so many interesting technical problems specifically. So, I mean, just getting to work with a lot of smart people on solving some of these huge problems, I mean, it, it's just a really fascinating thing. When Bill Gates became a billionaire in 1987 at 31, he was the youngest person to ever join the Three Comma Club. In 2008, Mark Zuckerberg took that title and he became the youngest ever self-made billionaire at 23. Even today's wealthiest entrepreneurs didn't see that much success at such a young age. And it took him just one year to make the leap from millionaire to billionaire. In 2009, Facebook had become the world's most used social network. The user base has now more than two billion people using it every month almost a third of the world's population. This has made Zuckerberg a billionaire many times over. However, money wasn't his motivation. About that time, he turned down many opportunities to sell the site, often from multi-billion sums. Instead, he wanted to create a better user experience and make the world better by making it a more open place where people are able to share more and understand what's going on. In 2010, the movie The Social Network, based on Zuckerberg and the founding years of Facebook, was released. Although he claimed that many details in the film were inaccurate and objected strongly to its narrative, which he thought portrayed him in a bad light. Indeed, the young Harvard freshman was portrayed as a brilliant genius without scruples and socially awkward nerd. The film was critically acclaimed and won the Golden Globe Award for Best Picture in 2011. He continued on his way to glory. In 2010, Time Magazine named him Person of the Year. In May 2011, he bought a 5,000 square foot house for $7 million in Palo Alto. He and his girlfriend Priscilla settled in their new home. The next year, Zuckerberg began buying the surrounding properties spending more than $30 million to acquire four homes. On May 18, 2012, Zuckerberg took Facebook public with an initial public offering at $38 per share. They raised $16 billion, making it the biggest internet IPO in history. However, the share's price crashed dramatically over the next months, but it recovered in 2013. At this time, the platform had more than 500 million daily active users across the globe. Zuckerberg's net worth was estimated at more than $19 billion, and he was only 28. Just one day after he took the company public and in the span of their relationship, he and Priscilla tied the knot in the backyard of their Palo Alto home in a small surprise ceremony. The newlyweds went off to spend their honeymoon in Rome, Italy. They adopted a dog they named Beast, who's probably become the world's most famous mop dog. Beast eventually became the older fur brother to the couple's first baby girl, Max, born three years later in December 2015.
They would have another daughter later on in 2017, named August. Zuckerberg has said that becoming a father changed the way he saw the world and how he ran Facebook. Back in 2010, another social network was created, one that would become gigantic and that would end up being the second most popular social network in the world after Facebook. Instagram. This could only mean one thing. It would be a threat to Zuckerberg's platform. And so rather than compete with it, Zuckerberg bought Instagram for $1 billion in 2012, a shocking sum at that time for a company with only 13 employees. Instagram today has over 1 billion users and contributes over $20 billion to Facebook's annual revenue. Facebook also purchased WhatsApp in February 2014 for a total of around $16 billion. Since 2008, the tech leader has now become one of the most influential people in the world. In 2013, Facebook cracked the Fortune 500 list for the first time, making Zuckerberg, at the age of 28, the youngest CEO on the list. And in December 2016, he was ranked 10th on Forbes' list of the world's most powerful people. Facebook is now a giant in the tech industry, and no empire is built without damaging something. I think Facebook has become too big, too powerful, and the problems that it's creating are significant, and, and we, we have the power to rein it in. We just have to, to stand up and ask government to make it happen. With every success comes criticism. Although the company has been successful, its last decade has also been full of scandals and accusations. Over the years, Zuckerberg has had to face several controversies as he became one of the world's most powerful people. And Facebook has been accused of spreading fake news. And issues also included internet privacy. In 2016, at the Facebook Social Good Forum in New York City, Zuckerberg announced he had plans to keep improving the platform. I think about this work in a few different ways. First, what can we do to prevent bad things from happening in the world and to our community? Second, what can we do when something bad is actually happening? And third, what can we do after something bad has happened to help people out? We're starting to do more proactive work, like when we use artificial intelligence to identify things that could be bad or harmful and then flag them so our teams can review them. Or when someone shares a post that makes it seem like they might want to harm themselves and we give them and their friends suicide prevention tools that they can share to get the help that they need. Safety Check is an example of technology that we've built to help people during a crisis. Because when something's going on, whether it's a natural disaster or a terrorist attack, there's nothing more important than knowing that the people you love and care about are safe. Finally, when a crisis hits, we're also building tools within Facebook that let people raise money and awareness to help rebuild their communities. And this is just the beginning. The philosophy of everything we do at Facebook, is that our community can teach us what we need to do, and our job is to learn as quickly as we can and keep on getting better and better. And that's especially true when it comes to helping to keep people safe. We're going to keep finding new ways to empower our community through technology and services in a way that's effective and that helps people feel comfortable when they need to use them most. I'm really proud of the progress we've made, but I know that there's a lot more that we need to do. And that's why I hope that you're going to be inspired by what you hear today. And more importantly, I hope you'll help us build even more tools to keep our communities safe. Then there was the Cambridge Analytica scandal in 2018, which was another hard blow to Zuckerberg. He came under fire again when he pushed the limits on user privacy. 
It was revealed that the data analytics firm with ties to President Donald Trump's 2016 campaign improperly obtained data from tens of thousands of Facebook users. The information was utilized to target voters in the U.S. presidential election. The scandal shook investors' confidence in Facebook as more people increasingly became frustrated and angry with the company. Following the reveal, Zuckerberg testified before Congress in April 2018. He reminded people of the good Facebook can do while acknowledging the bad it had done. And as Facebook has grown, people everywhere have gotten a powerful new tool for staying connected to the people they love, for making their voices heard, and for building communities and businesses. Just recently, we've seen the Me Too movement and the March for Our Lives organized, at least in part, on Facebook. After Hurricane Harvey, people came together to raise more than $20 million for relief. And more than 70 million small businesses use Facebook to create jobs and grow. But it's clear now that we didn't do enough to prevent these tools from being used for harm as well. And that goes for fake news, for foreign interference in elections and hate speech, as well as developers and data privacy. We didn't take a broad enough view of our responsibility, and that was a big mistake. And it was my mistake, and I'm sorry. I started Facebook, I run it, and I'm responsible for what happens here. In 2019, the FTC fined Facebook $5 billion over violations of user privacy, a record-breaking fine for a tech company. The database that Facebook has amassed is humongous. It is no surprise that the company and its creator have drawn a lot of controversies. Many have struggled to understand the business model of the social media giant. For some, it has become too big to regulate. And they ask the question, should we still trust it? Zuckerberg's reputation was threatened many times over, and he's had to learn how to manage his anxiety as well as his public image. However, the negative image from his accusations seemingly did little to slow the company's progress. After a surge in his company's stock price in 2018, Zuckerberg unseated Warren Buffett and became the world's third richest person behind fellow tech billionaires Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates. In the end, Zuckerberg seems to want to prove to the world that he is just a normal person. To this day, he still wears a signature casual gray t-shirt and jeans on a daily basis, even in major business meetings. His style is perhaps the most famous of all tech CEOs, seeing he consistently wears the same outfit. However, don't be fooled. These t-shirts are known to cost at least $300. He revealed he wears the same clothes over and over again because he wants to limit the time he spends making decisions so he can concentrate on real work. He inspires his employees to keep the office environment casual, yet productive. He has said, I want to clear my life so that I have to make as few decisions as possible about anything except how to best serve this community. With all this wealth, there's one thing the billionaire doesn't seem to mind splurging on, real estate. And he has a knack for buying surrounding properties to the ones he buys to ensure his privacy. In 2014, his real estate portfolio jumped even more as he spent $100 million on two properties on the island of Kauai. An immense former sugar plantation. And a huge property with a white sand beach. Zuckerberg said he and Chan bought the land because they're dedicated to preserving its natural beauty. According to his Facebook page, the property's farm is even home to goats and turtles. He 
He's also bought properties on Lake Tahoe, costing $59 million combined. He owns, in total, 10 properties. Zuckerberg doesn't appear to travel much for pleasure, but when he does travel, Facebook foots the bill. In 2018, Facebook approved a record high $10 million annual security budget for Zuckerberg for bodyguards, security measures for his houses, and private aircraft. On May 25, 2017, at Harvard's 366th Commencement Day, Zuckerberg received an honorary degree from Harvard. He gave an emotional commencement speech as he recalled his old days at the school and how Facebook might never have happened without him being there. Change starts local. Even global change starts small with people like us. In our generation, the struggle of whether we connect more whether we achieve our greatest opportunities comes down to this, your ability to build communities and create a world where every single person has a sense of purpose. In August 2020, one of his genius moves propelled Zuckerberg's personal net worth over $100 billion for the first time. Facebook launched in over 50 countries a new Instagram feature that competed directly with TikTok in the US, Instagram Reels. We live in a society that never stops evolving. Zuckerberg hasn't stopped innovating and coming up with new ideas. He has understood that constant innovation is crucial to make it in modern society. We're here to talk about online platforms, but I think the true nature of competition is much broader. When Google bought YouTube, they could compete against the dominant player in video, which was the cable industry. When Amazon bought Whole Foods, they could compete against Kroger's and Walmart. When Facebook bought WhatsApp, we could compete against telcos who used to charge 10 cents a text message, but not anymore. Now people can watch video, get groceries delivered, and send private messages for free. That's competition. New companies are created all the time, all over the world. And history shows that if we don't keep innovating, someone will replace every company here today. And that change can often happen faster than you expect. Today, as the world battles the COVID-19 global pandemic and people shield it at home, Facebook has become a go-to communications tool Zuckerberg, along with Jeff Bezos, has had the biggest gains in 2020. The 36-year-old became the third centibillionaire on Earth. But for him, starting Facebook was not about the money. Little did he know that the small website he was running out of his dorm room would become the multi-billion dollar corporation it is today. But he had a vision, and he said, the thing I really care about is the mission, making the world open. So thanks to Facebook profits, Zuckerberg became the world's youngest billionaire. He started a family and bought up big multi-million dollar properties. For sure, his wealth has allowed him to have a privileged life. To most people, Mark Zuckerberg is only the multi-billionaire CEO. But there's also another way to see him. He is also a devoted and loving father and husband. He regularly shares candid photos of his family on Facebook and Instagram to show the world that he is embracing being a father.
But ultimately, luxury isn't the only thing that Zuckerberg has put millions into. In fact, his main priority is giving his money away, rather than spending it. He has pledged hundreds of millions to charity. At 36, he is doing his part to spread the wealth around. Zuckerberg and his wife are generous philanthropists, investing billions in childhood education and medical research. In 2010, Zuckerberg announced on The Oprah Winfrey Show that he was donating $100 million to the public schools of New Jersey. <laughs> okay. So, okay, why education so, and why Newark? Why education? Because every child deserves a good education, and right now that's not happening. Um, you know, I mean, I, I've had a lot of opportunities in, in my life, and a lot of that comes from you know, having gone to really good schools, and I just want to do what I can to make sure that everyone has those same opportunities. The couple announced that year that they were signing on to the Giving Pledge, joining Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, a commitment made by billionaires to give away more than half of their wealth during their lifetimes or in their wills. We will spend our lives working to make sure future generations have the greatest opportunities possible, the couple wrote in a letter. In December 2015, they founded the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative that will focus on health and education and pledge to give away 99% of their Facebook stake over their lifetimes to improve lives. They have donated $25 million toward fighting the Ebola virus and have said their goal is to cure all diseases in the lifetime of their daughters. A couple of weeks ago, Priscilla and I made a donation to help the people on the ground leading the fight against Ebola. Stopping Ebola is something we both really care about. The Ebola epidemic in West Africa has become one of the biggest health crises in the world. Thousands of lives have already been lost, and if we don't act now, then many more people will suffer and Ebola could become a long-term global crisis. At Facebook, we want to make sure that we do our part to help in the fight against Ebola. Amid the corona outbreak in 2020, Zuckerberg also donated $25 million to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that is searching for treatments for the disease. Mark Zuckerberg changed the game of the internet forever. Ever since Facebook came, everything sped up. Connecting, advertising, marketing, Everything started on this one platform. And even today, when people claim that Facebook is losing its popularity, it gets roughly 7,000 people registered in every 15 minutes. It is even popular in China, where it's banned by the government. Almost everyone today who has access to the internet has a Facebook account too. However controversial it may be, Facebook is in the game for the long run. The tech industry is an American success story. The products we build have changed the world and improved people's lives. Our industry is one of the ways that America shares its values with the world and one of our greatest economic and cultural exports. Facebook is part of this story. We started with an idea to give people the power to share and connect. And we've built services that billions of people find useful. I'm proud that we've given people who've never had a voice before the opportunity to be heard and given small businesses access to tools that only the largest players used to have. Since COVID emerged, I'm proud that people have used our services to stay in touch with friends and family who they can't be with in person and to keep their small businesses running online when physical stores are closed. I believe that Facebook and the US tech industry are a force for innovation and empowering people. But I recognize that there are concerns about the size and power of tech companies. Mark Zuckerberg was only just 19 when he built the social media giant out of his small campus dorm room and changed the world and the internet forever. Facebook has strived for more than a decade after an extraordinary growth in size and influence. 
The internet pioneers led the company through the years, through scandals, challenges, and turmoil. And yet, it is still standing. Undoubtedly, it is an enormous success story. Facebook now has more than 2 billion users all around the world. It has made people able to connect more than ever before. Thanks to Zuckerberg, people around the globe can easily keep in touch with all their families, and it rallies people together through groups and fan pages. Not so long ago, society did not have such an opportunity. So although its true value is debatable, it's safe to say that Facebook and its creator are two of the 21st century's most influential, controversial, and powerful figures. Mistakes were made along the way, but they paid off in the end. Taking risks is one of the secrets to Zuckerberg's success. He claims the biggest risk is not taking any risk. Mark Zuckerberg remained true to his initial vision and his one social mission, connecting people, building community, and bringing the world closer together. He has succeeded far and wide. He has built an empire. My top priority has always been our social mission of connecting people, building community, and bringing the world closer together. Advertisers and developers will never take priority over that as long as I'm running Facebook. I started Facebook when I was in college. We've come a long way since then. We now serve more than 2 billion people around the world. And every day, people use our services to stay connected with the people that matter to them most. I believe deeply in what we're doing. And I know that when we address these challenges, we'll look back and view helping people connect and giving more people a voice as a positive force in the world.